<laughs> All right. Questions. Okay. This is Irene. We're going to bring it on, right. starting with Irene's story today. She says, we're currently teaching about the topic of abuse in marriage in my church. I'm confused because the message that we women are hearing is that God hates divorce and that adultery is the only permissible reason to divorce. As such, women and girls are being encouraged to continue in abusive relationships and pray about it rather than leave. I'm very confused about this as I don't see anywhere in the Bible that God says he ordained abuse in marriage. Uh, he, he certainly didn't. I, I think the idea of one human being abusing another one is outrageous. We're supposed to honor women. You know, the Bible says to treat them as the weaker vessel, to honor them, to give honor to them. And uh, the whole idea that a husband is going to beat his wife up, they might be able to do that in Islam, but not in Christianity. And, uh, you know, this whole matter of what you can divorce for, what you can't divorce for, as far as I can see, the Bible says that if an unbelieving spouse uh, departs, deserts, the brother or sister isn't bound. Well, I, I think there's such a thing as construction, the, the constructive desertion. I think if a, a spouse makes it impossible to live with them, if they beat up somebody emotionally or physically, um, I think that's a reason for uh, certainly divorce. Now, in terms of remarriage, then you can get into other theological issues. But I don't think women have to stay in an abusive relationship. I think anybody that teaches that doesn't know the full spirit of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ was one who advocated love, not harshness. And the thing that they said in the early Christians, they looked at the Christians and the Romans said, what wonderful women they have. Because these people were, I mean, they, they, they were godly, beautiful people, and they were honored as such. Okay. This is Joyce who says, I know the New Testament does not advocate, advocate infant baptism. I also know that there are many Christian denominations which place a high importance on this ritual. My question is twofold. Is it right for a local church to baptize a baby born out of wedlock to parents who have no immediate plans to get married? And how should I respond to those involved who are happy and make a celebration out of the the event. When I speak out about it, I feel like the odd man out. Well, uh, in the early days of the uh, Catholic Church particularly, uh, they thought that infant baptism, they believed in baptismal regeneration. And uh, the Bible really doesn't teach that. But uh, then they said, well, what happens is that the parents uh, consent to the baptism of their children. Uh, and therefore, the, you know, they sprinkle or whatever. Uh, the New Testament teaches believers baptism. And that means you've got to believe, and then you're, you're dead with Christ and raised in newness of life. But I, I do think there are a number of uh, churches that there's a pledge, a dedication. The children are dedicated, and the parents, uh, you know, acknowledge that I'm going to raise this children in the uh, nurture and admonition of the Lord. But as far as the church getting going along with some child that's born out of wedlock and the parents aren't Christian, don't purport to be, I, I think that's a mockery. It All is right. almost just ritual, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a useless ritual. What else? Okay, this is Adriana who says, My husband is really into computer games, and lately he's been playing this game called Arch Age. I tried playing the game before, but I stopped because I didn't like that there's a lot of witchcraft, spells, wizard stuff, and praying to these figures in the game. I felt it wasn't right. My husband says I'm just overreacting, that it's just a game. It's not like he's actually doing all that stuff. So I want to know, is it okay as a Christian to play these kinds of games? Um, we did a long speech. There was a big thing about Dungeons and Dragons, and people actually got absorbed in that stuff. They took on those roles, and they began doing horrible things, and it was almost like an invitation to demonic possession. So uh, I, I think playing some of these role games, I don't know which one they took, I don't do it, but uh, I, I think, you know, should a Christian do it? The answer is uh, probably not. I think we shouldn't get ourselves involved in something where we're role playing a thing having to do with demonic mm -hmm. forces. All right. This is Dixie who says, Pat, my sister told me that the star of Bethlehem is a star of Satan, not a holy star. She says Satan put it there to lead King Herod to the baby Jesus so he could destroy him. Is this true? And if so, why is the star always in the nativity scenes? Where in heaven's name do people get some? Some of the nonsense that they teach. Your sister is telling you stuff like that. The I've never star even heard that. was for the wise men. The wise men were astrologers uh, from uh, the East. 
and uh, they saw a star that represented, and you can go through the fact that it was a constellation, and this had to do with Israel. And it led them to the baby. It was probably two years after Jesus was born. It had nothing to do with Satan putting a star in the sky. Satan doesn't put stars in the sky. I mean, that's the story about the wise men in the east. And they came to worship the baby Jesus, and the Lord showed them this was the star. That's the story. Read it in the Bible, okay? <laughs> All the time we have for today. <laughs> right. Thank you.